Many of you know about the cartridge analysis service that we do here at WAM Engineering, where we take your cartridge and we analyze it very carefully in our lab for the four optimal angles um, that your cartridge needs to uh, be aligned at in order to have the stylus and the cantilever relationship with the record service be such that you can pick up the maximum amount of information with the greatest faithfulness to the way it was laid down into the lacquer in the first place. When you get your cartridge back from us, you will receive a jewel box with all of the corrective shims uh, for you to use in the installation process. Now, of course, just a side note here, um, if the corrective angles required for your cartridge, principally with the SRA and the VTA, are, are achievable by your tone arm alone, you aren't required to use the corrective shim. You could use the Wally reference single blades to achieve those, those angles. Of course, uh, refer to the Wally reference instruction videos to see how that's done. You'll also receive the lab report and instructions for mounting. Of course, we've got the video series on it as well, how to install an analyzed cartridge. So a number of you have asked to understand the laboratory report on your cartridge a little bit more deeply. This video is uh, meant to do just that. Let's discuss uh, the report in a little more detail. At the top of the report, you'll see the height of the cartridge, and you're gonna see three heights. One is the height of your cartridge under its nominal tracking force, um, and that is, of course, the distance from the surface of the record to the top surface of your cartridge. And then you'll also see the heights of the cartridge plus the white standard corrective shim. And the third line item will be the cartridge height plus the height of the milled custom brass corrective shim. You will have chosen in advance which of those two corrective shims you prefer for your uh, installation. These height figures are important because they will determine for you which of the thickness shims to stack on top of your dual axis Wally reference to achieve the exact distance between the surface of the record and the underside of the head shell to accommodate your cartridge plus the appropriate corrective shim. The stylus run is the horizontal dimension between the where the stylus sits and the central axis of the cartridge screws. I need that for a number of calculations and trigonometry that are being done in the background. This number is also helpful to have on hand if you are not able to reach your targeted overhang arc using the Wally tractor that figure will give us a clue as to what might be going wrong. This rarely happens, but it's good to have the information. The next section on the report will be covering your SRA and VTA results. And these two issues will be covered in the video series titled The Seven Alignment Targets of Analog Playback Optimization. On a quick note here, stylus rake angle is important for horizontal modulations of the stylus and vertical tracking angle is important for the for vertical modulations of the stylus. They each have their own separate um, uh, target alignment range and there's usually a balance that I must strike between them because I'm often not able to get both of them to hit within their target range. This inability to consistently get both the SRA and VTA targets hit for all cartridges I see is a function of how the stylus cantilever assemblies are designed and built by the three stylus cantilever assembly manufacturers. I'm typically pleased to get the stylus rake angle anywhere between 92.5 degrees down to about 90.5 degrees with an optimal range of 91, 92. On the top green line, you're gonna see what your stylus rake angle is with a perfectly level head shell under dynamic conditions, meaning the record is spinning and causing a drag on that stylus, which will cause the cantilever to drop a little bit. And the differences between the static and dynamic conditions range anywhere from a quarter of a degree difference to as much as two and a quarter degrees I've seen. On this line here, it spells out what is the amount of angular correction that would be needed to get your SRA to 90 degrees. 
That isn't necessarily where I'm going to end up for your cartridge, because we haven't yet considered VTA, which we'll now do with this line. This line shows what the VTA is of your cartridge, again, under dynamic conditions with perfectly level head shell. Now, I've put on the report that I'd like this to be less than 22 degrees. Truth is, I'd rather have it less than 20 degrees. I don't believe there's a single Neumann or Scully lathe out there that's cutting at greater than 20 degrees, particularly when you consider something called lacquer springback, which probably deserves its own video or series of videos. It's a rather complex subject. If I want to target something other than the 92 degree SRA target, in this cell here, you will see a figure that will adjust it either up or down. So there's a couple reasons why I might put something in this, in this cell here. One would be, let's say we needed more SRA correction than the body of your cartridge will allow. Meaning, if I put that much angular correction on your cartridge, the cartridge body would start touching the record or just be at risk of coming too close to the record. That might uh, cause me to put an adjustment figure there. Or perhaps the cartridge body isn't, a, isn't an issue, but the VTA is rather high and I want to get the cantilever down a little bit further. So instead of targeting a 92 SRA, I will want to target, say, a 91 SRA, in which case you might see uh, a negative one figure there. This next line then shows what the net total SRA VTA correction is followed by a figure showing what the net VTA figure is. Again, ideally this is less than 22 degrees, but the truth is, actually, for reasons that I will go into on the VTA video in the video series, uh, the seven alignment targets of analog playback optimization, um, that is very uncommon to actually be able to get a cartridge to have its VTA in its optimal range. The last line then in this section shows what is the net stylus rake angle you will end up with, with the correction that I'm calling for, for your cartridge. The next section on the report has to do with azimuth. It starts with a line item called the visual stylus azimuth orientation. What that's referring to is when, when I'm looking straight down on the stylus from its zenith in the laboratory microscope, do I see that that stylus is canted one way or the other on the azimuth axis. This observation gives me an idea whether we might have an azimuth issue, um, just based purely on an optical inspection. Remember, as I go through on my video on azimuth, you do not align for an optimal azimuth optically, and that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just seeing if there is any indication that the stylus may not be orthogonally mounted to the top surface of the uh, cartridge body. Now under the azimuth results, you're gonna see crosstalk figures, two of them, one for right into left channel and left into the right channel. And my goal is to get them close to each other, but not necessarily identical. Um, why? Because there's actually three things I look for when I'm achieving the optimal azimuth angle not just balancing crosstalk between channels, but I'm also looking at phase relationships between the, the channel playing the signal and, the, and, the, and its phase relationship to the crosstalk information. I do that for both channels, and I want the, so I want to balance phase relationships as well. That's the second element. Then the third element, which is a little more distant, a little less important, but also a good indicator, is I'm also watching channel balance. And I, I want, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing a balance, um, uh, a bit of a dance between those things. So if you're wondering why I end up with the crosstalk figures in the left and right channels being even as much as a decibel or more off from each other, um, don't worry about that. Um, you can always call me to discuss in more detail, but uh, there is more consideration that has gone into this than just balancing those channels. I also consider the overall level of crosstalk. I mean, if we've got high 30s, high mid 30s uh, in decibels in, in crosstalk figures, I don't worry as much about balancing the two decibel figures. I then concentrate much more heavily on phase balancing. The optimal azimuth angle figure you see for your cartridge then is given in degrees, of course, 
with an orientation clockwise or counterclockwise. Of course, the perspective of that orientation is uh, looking at the front of the cartridge as if you're standing on the record in the groove looking straight at it. Zenith error. Now, any error would mean an angular deviation from perpendicularity between the horizontal alignment of the cantilever and a line drawn between the two contact edges of the stylus. This perspective, as written in the report, it's either clockwise or counterclockwise, is a perspective given with the stylus pointing directly at your eye, or in our case, directly into the microscope lens, of course. But because the perspective is given with the stylus pointed up, and let's just say the error is clockwise, then why is it that when you correct for that error, you are rotating your cartridge also clockwise? It's because you've had to take that stylus and invert it in order to get it to play. And in that inversion, you go from clockwise error to counterclockwise error if you're looking from the same perspective. And to correct for any zenith error, using the Wally Zenith, you're going to see on the report at the very end, two line items. They tell you which of the radial lines on the Wally Zenith to use to align your cantilever to. You will note that those two lines might not be the exact same figure. The difference between those two line items is determined by whether you are using the corrective shim that we've made for you or not at the time of alignment. Because the corrective shim has in it the implementation not just of your ideal SRA VTA but also your ideal azimuth. But when you implement an azimuth angle and look from the front of the cartridge, it can look to you like the cantilever needs to be realigned at the null point. That's a visual error that occurs because of that azimuth angle has been tilted. We've used trigonometry to account for that visual error in determining which of the Wally Zenith uh, radial lines you will use to align it. At the bottom, a note section for any peculiarities about your cartridge or special, special uh, considerations I would want you to know about the test or about your cartridge. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And of course, enjoy Analog Forever.